Hey everyone, so we got a couple stories to talk about today. Uh, one of them dealing with Capcom and Resident Evil and maybe something else, I don't really know. Uh, the other one dealing with one of Nintendo's major partners. Uh, this is the sort of thing that Nintendo might actually get directly involved in. Now, before we talk about what's happening, I gotta remind you we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X to one lucky winner this month. Head to the Gleam.io link down in the description or the pinned comment to enter for that. Now, what am I even talking about here when it comes to these stories? Well, first let's start with the one that's really, really interesting, but we don't exactly know what it is. So Capcom has a teaser countdown up on their website. At the time of recording, it says six days and three hours. So there's basically six days to go before whatever Capcom has to announce on their main page is announced. Now, what's interesting is they also have some sort of teaser splash page up on the Resident Evil page. It seems to be teasing Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3, potentially a collection. I have no idea. It also could be completely unrelated and be just leading into Resident Evil 4 Remastered Remake. It could also be Revelations 3. I don't know what's happening, okay? Nobody really knows except Capcom. Nothing seems to be leaking about this anywhere. So I'm very curious to see what these two different teases are. Are they teasing the same thing? Is Capcom teasing multiple game announcements really, really soon? I don't know, but it's really exciting. And obviously we'd have to find out if anything is happening with Nintendo in regards to this, or is this just gonna end up being for the other platforms, which is totally fine as well. Uh, but obviously as a Nintendo channel, it would be cool if we got some Capcom action on Switch. Now, the second story is kind of interesting. I'm gonna read this and we're gonna talk about this. It comes from Platinum Games CEO, Asushi Anaba. Um, and, and he talks in an interview with Video Game Chronicle uh, so suggesting the company might actually be open to acquisition. Let's, let's actually read what he said and discuss why this matters for Nintendo. The most important thing for us is to have the freedom to make the games that we want to make. What I hear about the recent acquisitions, I don't think Microsoft is going to start micromanaging Activision to where they take away all their freedom. I don't think it's going to be a relationship like that. I think there's going to be a lot of mutual respect there. And I think Activision will be able to continue to do what they do best. That's also what's most important to us at the end of the day, whatever form that takes for us and our company. So I would not turn anything down as long as our freedom was still respected. And this is a really interesting ideology here from Platinum Games, because essentially what Anaba is saying is, hey, you know what? You can buy us as long as we can maintain our freedom. Obviously, that's going to interest Microsoft and Sony, who are making acquisitions because Platinum Games is a very well-respected company that makes high-quality games. But here's the thing. Remember the words of Shintaro Furukawa at the recent investors meeting when he pretty much said, look, we're not against acquisitions. We don't think we need to make any. But if one of our key partners starts to be involved in such a thing, Nintendo is going to have to get involved as well. Platinum Games is a pretty big partner for Nintendo. They make Bayonetta 3. Uh, they also uh, made Astral Chain. So Nintendo likes to partner with Platinum Games. I got a feeling Nintendo isn't going to sit back and go, you know what? Yeah, Microsoft. Yeah, Sony. You just buy Platinum Games. Let's just let that happen. This is very interesting, of course, because Nintendo of the three companies is the most likely that if they bought Platinum Games, they would say, look, you're only making games for our platforms. But it depends on what sort of freedom Platinum Games is looking for. Are they looking for the multi-platform freedom or are they just looking for the creative freedom to make the games they want to make? That's obviously seems to be at least what I'm getting from this. But the bottom line is, man, oh man, they seem very open to being acquired by Microsoft. Obviously, they'd be willing to be acquired by Sony if they're willing to respect their freedom. And, you know, hey, Nintendo always said if someone, if one of their partners is affected, Nintendo's going to get involved as well. So this could be an outright bidding war by the end of this year for Platinum Games. And I'm, I'm obviously a bit worried as a Switch owner that we're going to see the Bayonetta franchise and others go away from Nintendo. Um, I'm obviously, you know, excited to see what they could do as like, you know, owned by Microsoft or Sony, but I, I'm always going to worry that, uh, you know, when these acquisitions happen, and this is the first one that might impact Nintendo directly, uh, that I'm actually scared. So we'll see what happens. I can only hope that Nintendo's built a strong enough relationship with Platinum where they would trust Nintendo to be a purchasing company, but you know what? Uh, there, there isn't really a whole lot we can do about this. This this is just the way the industry is going right now. And I, you know, hey, let the chips fall where they may. 
Obviously, as a Nintendo guy, I would love for Nintendo to get a hold of Platinum Games, but I do play on everything, right? I play on Xbox and PlayStation and PC, so I'm going to get to play their games wherever they go. I just, man, the idea that Nintendo would lose a major partner like this, like this is almost as big a blow to me as Capcom. I know Capcom um, has bigger games and, and bigger sales, and but still, I, I, I just... Oh, it's hard for me to imagine Platinum Games no longer working with Nintendo. They've had such a long working relationship over the years from the wonderful 101. Uh, they helped with Star Fox Zero. So, like, I, it's just... Oh, I really, really sincerely hope that Nintendo does get involved, at least in this, and we don't see them just sit back and let one of their major partners go to the wayside. Now that Platinum Games has literally dropped their stance, they used to say, we are unwilling to sell the company. Now, you know, with all the management shifts, they're like, you know what? Actually, maybe act probably let's talk now uh, that seems to be what platinum games is doing it's opening the door open conversations with who's ever interested in them and i guarantee you microsoft sony and nintendo will both or all three will be calling them so uh let me know what you think about this obviously down in the comments below because this is obviously to me one of those nintendo shifting moments because nintendo obviously gets some exclusive games out of platinum games so I don't know. I'm just going to sit back and watch the fireworks and watch all three companies duke it out and, and see who comes out on top because uh, Nintendo has the lead platforms in terms of sales right now. Obviously, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X are doing incredible. Game Pass is growing at an amazing rate. PC gaming is larger than it's ever been. Obviously, mobile phone gaming has, you know, a billion plus people playing it. Like, gaming's in a really good place. Esports are popping up. Nintendo's not supporting official Smash tournaments, although, like, they're still not technically 100% getting behind the whole cash thing. Nintendo, get on that. Stop pissing off the Smash community. The whole reason people got excited about you actually getting involved and sanctioning stuff is that they thought you would actually provide cash prizes. And when you see things like Ninjala out there offering cash prizes in tournaments and they're like some indie studio gung-ho, like Nintendo, come on, get on the train, stop being dumb, but whatever. The point is, gaming is in a very, very good place. It's bigger than it's ever been. So... Let the chips fall where they may. Whatever Nintendo has next for hardware, whatever the other platforms have next for with their hardware, heck, they'll have slim versions and mid-gen refreshes at some point. Whatever's next for video games, Horizon, you know, comes out this week. That's really exciting. Horizon Forbidden West is going to be a, a really big game I'm really excited for. Uh, Kirby, obviously, Mouthful Mode coming. We got Project Triangle Strategy. Uh, you know, we, we have Starfield coming for Xbox. There's so much exciting things happening this year in gaming. <sighs> The only question is, when am I going to find the time to play it all? Oh, man, I need to, like, I, I need to, like, go to the future and clone myself into, like, three different people. Maybe four different people, because maybe five. Give, give, give one to my kids, give one to my fiance, and then three of them to play video games. <laughs> all right, folks. I am Nintendo Rumble Jets from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.